Hi guys. It's a little bit of a great, gloomy, and almost cool day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is time to head on down the the old Maya collapse civilization trail. So it is a Friday morning. That would be Friday, February 10th. And so before we head out of Bacalar, Mexico, and I do what I do every Friday, wherever I am, whatever collapsed or collapsing civilization I find myself in, and we're going to check in uh, with my ecological meltdown round up rant, where we touch base with our buddies at mongabay.com, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls, see what they have on their minds this week while I have been getting shit-faced on margaritas every night and diving in cenotes. What is going on at Manga Bay? And uh, Manga Bay, you know, usually starting in the tropics, but we're going to start up at the north end. I hard to think about Greenland down here, uh, but we have not a good sign not a good sign to kick off this week as study shows Greenland's temperatures at 1,000 year high. New research shows that north central Greenland experienced the highest temperatures between 2001 and 2011 over a 1,000 year period. I don't know why we don't have a more recent year than that. Scientists came to this conclusion after reconstructing, reconstructing, I think, is the word, climate conditions over the last millennium by analyzing ice cores from the Greenland ice sheet. So that's what's going on uh, in Greenland, but uh, of course, the new, uh, the new big question is when will El Nino return to the planet and what will that mean for everybody, particularly coral reefs? And El Nino is forecast for 2023. How much coral will bleach this time? Forecast suggests that an El Nino climate pattern could begin later this year raising sea temperatures at a time when global temperatures are already higher than ever due to human-driven climate change. If an El Nino develops and it becomes a moderate to severe event, it could raise global temperatures by more than one and a half C. Hmm, the threshold set by the Paris Agreement. An El Nino would generate many impacts on both terrestrial and marine ecosystems, including the potential for droughts, increased precipitation, depending on where you are, fires, coral bleaching, invasions of predatory marine species like crown of thorns starfish, disruptions to marine food chains, and kelp forest die-offs. All right, it sounds like there will be no shortages of rants in 2023 if and when the new El Nino gets here. Okay, so uh, I'm glad to see this continuing uh, coverage of the Intag Valley in Ecuador, you know, where I spent several months before being run out of town uh, for being a rich real estate developer from Texas. It was determined that I was a rich real estate developer from Texas, so I was run out of town, out of the Intag Valley by the little greenies. And so far, you know, even when I was down there 14 years ago, they had been fighting this huge Chinese copper mine 
but it looks like the uh, it looks like the game is up. Game over for the Entag Valley. Uh, this rich cloud forest has been targeted by mining companies seeking, seeking its vast mineral resources like copper. The Intag Valley is among the world's most biodiverse places in the world, with more than half of its species found nowhere else. Uh, and so far, the battle has become the largest continuing resistance to mining in Latin America. And I do understand that this is, uh, there's a big uh, expat, it, it's not just, it's not just gringos, but all sorts of foreigners have landed in the Intag Valley, but I guess Texans were not allowed. It's fine, you know, for those honkies to move there, but nobody from Texas allowed to show up there, but uh, it is this, uh, community of expats who have somehow, but uh, as I say, looks like game over for the Intag. Okay, any, any headline in Manga Bay or anywhere else starting out with the words sustainable fish farming, uh, as far as I need to go, okay, read my lips. There is no such thing as sustainable fish farming. Anyway, that does get me hungry for a tilapia, and I think this, this is a picture of a tilapia. There you go. So, well, if you're talking about the, you know, tilapia ponds in Kenya, okay, maybe. Uh, that's what they're talking about. This is why I eat tilapia. Man, I wish the hell this lake had tilapia in it. it you know, the, uh, the restaurant owners around here on this lake are acting like the fish that they catch come out of this lake. And I finally had one of these fish taco guys explain to me, like, you dumb gringo, if the fish were coming out of this lake, uh, this lake would be fished out in one week. Uh, it would be completely unsustainable. So if you're ever in Bacalar, Mexico, and anyone tries to tell you the fish came out of the lake, anyway, this looks like Manga Bay is cheering on uh, solar power, keeping the lights on in the Amazon rainforest. You know, Red has his own YouTube channel, Empowering the Amazon. Uh, I'm going to move on with that. Uh, all right, here's a long article about, you know, how Lula is going to save the noble savages. Good luck with that. All right, I wondered whatever happened to that shipwreck over there in Sri Lanka. The Express Pearl. Express Pearl salvage continues as study shows toxic effects of the disaster. Salvage operations of the sunken MV Express Pearl freighter off Sri Lanka's west coast has made some progress with the rear section of the wreck successfully raised off the seabed. Uh, meanwhile, a new study highlights how the marine disaster significantly impacted the coastal environment, water quality, and in turn the ocean's biodiversity, fisheries, seafood industry, and the livelihoods of the fishing communities. Yep, 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 yep. 
It's a possible reason the disaster has been cited as a possible reason for a state of turtle deaths and other marine animals following the disaster. Uh, do you think so? Alright, here's a story about how Latin American amphibians are doomed. Have I heard one frog down here on this lake? You know, this lake is ringed by uh, these reed beds. I mean, it looks like the place should be throbbing with a uh, frog song. I have, as far as I know, I have not heard one frog since getting to this reed ringed lake in Mexico. All right, what's going on in sub-Saharan Africa? Hmm, would you believe that illegal gold mining is threatening Ghana's forests? In Ghana's, in Ghana, Illegal miners known as Golom siders are carrying out an increasing share of the country's gold production. In recent years, these miners have been sourcing their machinery from China. Yes. And take a wild guess what that means. The mechanization, you know, from China of gold mining in Sub-Saharan Africa is accelerating the destruction of forests and farms as well as polluting waterways. Hmm. Who would have thunk it? Okay, they, they have these little short snippets from Sub-Saharan Africa as well. Alright, let's look at Mozambique. As much as three quarters, as much as three quarters of the former, now former forest flanking Mozambique's Mount Namuli have been lost since 2006, threatening the newly described Namuli horseshoe bat. You know, it used to be that you could, uh, you know, these, these steep-sided mountains used to provide some sort of refuge for wildlife in the tropics. You can kiss that goodbye three-quarters. I guess there's a little crown of greenery left at the very top, which will be gone in the next few years. All right, let's go up to Niger. Environmentalists fear a new pipeline linking oil fields in Niger to the Atlantic coast will damage both forest and wetland habitat along its length. Wow! Man! You know, once again, this is why I am so happy that we have Rhett Butler, nose on the ground. I never would have figured that out myself. Okay, what is going on with the tree-dependent marbled cat? Hmm, forest loss may push tree-dependent marbled cats into the threatened category currently considered near threatened on the IUC and Red List, the little known marbled cat may be at greater risk from habitat destruction than previously thought. Hmm. All right. Uh, Occasionally, there is a ray of good news uh, here in, uh, in Manga Bay. And so we do have a ray of hope. Of, uh, uh, hope. 
pollution and climate change set the stage for a rise in antimicrobial resistance. Ha! Huh. A new report from the UN illustrates the role that pollution, climate change, and biodiversity loss can play in the development of antimicrobial resistance. Yes. Uh, the compounds used to treat bacterial, viral, parasitic, and fungal infections have saved countless human lives, but their overuse and presence in the environment from human waste, agriculture, and effluent from the pharmaceutical industry and in places like hospitals have given rise to resistance to these chemicals. Uh, if this resistance continues to increase, experts warn and doomers cheer that an additional 10 million people may lose their lives by 2050. All right. Okay, I love it when they ask a question, is El Salvador preparing to reverse its landmark mining ban? The answer to the question, is El Salvador preparing to reverse its landmark mining ban, I suspect uh, is there never was a mining ban in El Salvador, but on the hair thin chance that mining actually has been banned in El Salvador, the answer to the question is yes, El Salvador is preparing to reverse its landmark mining ban. Uh, environmentalists are getting concerned after the government has created a new agency to oversee extractive industries hmm, and has begun looking into international agreements that facilitate investment in precious metals. Yep, yep, yep. Five anti-mining protesters were arrested in January after mining officials visited their town. I bet. Um, here is one that's way too complicated to uh, get into about the European Union's toxic collusion with fishing lobbies is damaging Indian Ocean tuna. Do you think so? Uh, Amazonian countries must act together to reverse rainforest laws, experts say. But the problem is, according to the experts, Amazonian countries lack the data for effectively running restoration actions. Do you think so? All right, what is going on in the, I guess this is in Colombia along the Pure River. Illegal mines and floating towns on the Pure River leave uncontacted indigenous people at risk. The Yuri Passe are at risk of coming into contact with illegal miners and drug traffickers, which violates their right and deliberate decision to live in isolation from the Western world. My guess is that a lot of the uncontacted young men of the tribe will be the very people that the miners will be hiring. Um, okay, 
Nepali's love of momos threatens endangered wild water buffaloes. A momo is the most sought after dumpling in Nepal. Buffalo meat dumplings, I have to admit, that sounds damn good. Uh, here we go. We have finally found a way, finally some hopium I can get behind, a way to get fishermen to stop killing sharks and rays. How about paying them not to fish for sharks and rays? That if we can just pay the fishermen more money not to go fishing for sharks and rays, guess what? Uh, anyway, uh, we, I think we've already mentioned this. Bolivian National Park hit hard by forest fires last year. Uh, home to more than 1,100 vertebrate species, fires burned across a region comprising an estimated 18% of the park's total area last year. Uh, yep. Okay, well, we talked about the antimicrobial resistance, and here is the silver lining in pollinator decline. Pollinator declines linked to half a million early human deaths annually. A new study finds that half a million people are currently dying prematurely every year due to global insect pollinator decline. So, uh, there you go. But anyway, we're going to wrap up right there with that uh, slice of good news because the margar the two-for-one margaritas, uh, I'm actually filming this on Thursday evening. I, I admit, I'm just pretending like it's Friday. The, the manga bay thing came in early. So uh, I'm going to wrap this up and go have my final two margaritas in Bacalar Medica. And then, then we're off on our next adventure tomorrow. So uh, not sure when you'll hear from me again. Get out there and enjoy your two-for-one end times margaritas while you still can before it is game over. Bye, guys.